Hi and welcome to Themico. In this video, we start on the topic which is perhaps the most important one in the area of statics. This topic is how to determine the normal and shear forces and the bending moment on either side of the specified structures section and how to draw their corresponding diagrams. We'll start with normal and shear forces and then in the next video we'll concentrate on the bending moment. We are not going to cover torsion in this course, but we will leave it for a further course such as strength of materials. Sounds good? Let's get started then. First, we must understand why it's important to determine internal loadings in the structure. What are the main reasons for this? Well, if we would like to design some kind of structure, this requires that we define what kind of internal loadings affect it, and especially on the critical points of the structure. By doing this, it's possible for us to find maximum loadings in the structure, which will then determine what kind of material we are going to use for it, and what would be the suitable dimensions for the cross-section of the structure. Note that for structures which are dynamically loaded, it is necessary to also know the number of cycles for the load, and how the loading varies during its cycle. Don't worry, however, because we're not going to cover this that much in this course. So as you can see, there are many reasons why it's important to determine internal loadings, but it would be very time-consuming if we would determine internal loadings for each point of the structure. Here, drawing the diagrams will help us with solving maximum loadings much faster. Let's start from the normal forces. The first step for solving the normal forces in one section of the structure is to draw the free body diagram of the whole structure and to solve the support reactions by using equations of equilibrium. After you have done this, you are able to determine the normal force by summing the horizontal loads on one side of the section of the structure. Just remember the positive and negative directions for the load. For instance, here the magnitude of the normal force is negative because the external forces cause compression with the structure. For defining the normal force diagram, there are some things that you should take into account. The first thing is that the vertical axis of the diagram represents the magnitude of the loading and the horizontal axis represent the point in the structure's length. The second thing is that we usually mark the positive loading to be under the horizontal axis. And finally, for drawing the diagram, it's recommended that you use the free body diagram of the structure where the external loads are labeled and the support reactions are also solved and labeled. Now that the things that you should consider when drawing the normal force diagram are explained, Let's go through the steps to successfully draw the diagram that you can apply for different cases. In all cases, start the observation from the right end of the structure, then turn each horizontal force that you encounter 90 degrees clockwise and transfer this force onto the diagram with the right proportion. By doing this, you will get an incremental pattern in which for every point there is a horizontal force and there is also a jump whose value is the same as the corresponding force. You may also notice that the magnitude of the normal force in the diagram stays constant between two different horizontal forces. One thing that you should always remember about the normal force diagram is that the magnitude of the normal force is zero at the end of the structure, like in the example shown, if it's not externally loaded. A good habit is to also mark the maximum and minimum loading values onto the diagram. Let's move on now to the final topic of this video, which is to determine the shear force in the specified section of the structure and how to draw the shear force diagram. Basically, the steps that you can use to solve the problem are pretty much the same as in the normal force case. You start by solving the support reactions in the structure if these are not yet solved. Then you can determine the shear force magnitude in each section by summing the vertical loads and just remember that if you are looking at the right side of the section, then the positive direction of the load is downwards. And on the left side, the positive direction is upwards. After you have determined the shear force in each critical section of the structure, you can begin to sketch the shear force diagram. Like in the normal force situation, start traveling from the right end of the structure to the left, while also transferring each shear force value onto the diagram. Just remember that between the two vertical forces, the magnitude of the shear force should stay constant while proceeding in the diagram, and also that the magnitude should be zero at the other end of the structure. There is also another method to define the diagram, and for this purpose, you need to use the free body diagram of the structure. The method by which you can apply the free body diagram for drawing the diagram relates to the values of the vertical point loads and vertical support reactions. 
This is because of the fact that every time you encounter a vertical load or a vertical support reaction in the observed structure, this is creating a jump in the diagram, which has a corresponding magnitude with the value of the load or the support reaction. Note, however, that you can't apply the second method in the cases where the structure is subjected to distributed loading. The reason for this is explained in a future video. Hopefully, after watching this video, you understand why we want to be able to determine internal loadings in different structures, and you know how to determine normal force and shear force in different sections of the structure. Based on this information, you also know how to draw normal force and shear force diagrams. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.